hopefully you can see the smoke coming out there. A few minutes ago before I had the camera running, there was black smoke bellowing out of the uh, exhaust. So I don't know what's gone wrong with this. Obviously now it won't start. So this will be heading home to the uh, workshop and I'm trying to find out what's wrong with it there. Okay. So we got the fire pump back home. If you've seen in the uh, the video just just prior to this clip, I've been using it at the land. I've been using it actually to water plants, just using the the, uh, the water tank and the pump to get some water out to uh, a load of new plants that I put in. Been running fine. I'd used it maybe half a dozen times and thought it was uh, it was absolutely fine. I had it basically running just on tick over, not full power and uh, left it running for a while while I was watering the plants came back and all I could see was just black smoke billowing out billowing out the exhaust I um, switched it off got it going again, same thing and then it just stalled and I couldn't get it started again so I've brought it back home so now I've just taken the spark plug out, taken the air filter off just so I could get easier access to the spark plug and you can see, hopefully you can see on the spark plug there that's covered in a, in a milky oil so milky oil to me says that water has actually got into the oil so my next step was I thought I would I would undo the, the, the filler, filler plug and as you can see immediately this billow, billowed out that, that's under pressure at the moment pressure as in it's obviously it's a lot fuller than than this normally there's only a, a small layer of oil in there and that's what I've got I've got, I've got milky colored uh, milky colored oil which to me says water's getting in there so my immediate thoughts are that if you remember in previous videos I've actually had a leak in here took the whole pump housing to pieces and I basically got to a point of saying it was so much hassle trying to remove or replace those seals didn't think it was worth it and I couldn't see a way with those seals that they'd actually uh, allow water to get into the engine area but as soon as there's water coming out from that, that spot it does make me think that somehow water has got in there what I'm going to do I'll drain the oil and then uh, we'll take a few bits apart and we'll start having a look and see if I can diagnose and work out how and where the water's got in right we'll bring you back in a minute I'm just having a look at this and I think it's going to be easier for me to actually take take the whole pump off the uh, off the frame just so I've got easy access to everything so let's get looks like there's just just four bolts that need undoing and then these two things can be separated that's going to be... might not be so easy because of all of the uh, fittings that I've got on it One frame released, one pump and motor standing on their own. What I need to do is just take this water out that's still in the pump as it starts to leak on the workbench. Now just taking the exhaust off, so it's two nuts you take off there and a bolt and that the whole thing lifts off. That's interesting, so a lot of, a lot of milky oil. There's that a lot of oil billowing out of that exhaust. So obviously it must have been there. Uh, running with a lot of smoke out of it a long time before I saw it. I look in the exhaust port with a torch and also the uh, spark plug hole. It all looks good in there apart from just so wet with the uh, with the milky oil that's got in. And what I just noticed is I've got that milky oil dripping from 
from here now this is all supposed to be fuel so I'm going to open up that fuel bowl and have a look in there and just make sure that there's not uh, not oil in the fuel as well I can't see how that would get in I have no idea I don't have no idea how it could get in there it seems really strange for it to be coming from from this area which is where all the fuel is all right let's uh let's open up this and see what comes out it should just be pure fuel Hopefully you can still see that, but that just looks like fuel to me. A lot of dirt there. Very dirty fuel. Yep. It's not a good indication of uh, anything seriously wrong there, just because the fuel is dirty or that bowl was dirty. You do get a lot of dirt collected in there. Let's take the other one out. Look, there's milky substance in there. That is unbelievable. How the heck does that happen? Well, that's a bit of a head scratch for me because I have no idea how water can get into oil and that whole mixture can get back into the fuel line. Alright, we'll keep investigating. Alright, we've just undid a few more bolts and uh, if you can see in there, there is oily oh you can see in there there is definitely milky uh, milky oil and what actually looks like so it, is, it is fuel but it's fuel floating on that milky oil that is so strange so it's in that line that pipe Ah, I think that, that line there fits in here. So what we'll do, we'll take this cover off, investigate, or the four bolts there, investigate behind this cover, and we'll see what we've got in there. But we definitely have oil and water mix right throughout the, the whole system. So into the, been pushed into the spark plug, been pushed into the carb, to the fuel bowl. That's very interesting. Well, as you can see, it's definitely oil inside of there as well. But every time I've taken one of these off before, they've been very clean in there with their uh, yeah let's just think so they've had a little bit of oil in but not a not a huge amount so I would say I'd say as we've got water added into the oil the oil levels getting too high this has been filling up through here there is a there's an exhaust there, I don't know if it's some sort of exhaust, but that actually connects back into the fuel system. So I'm assuming, yeah, I've got, a, I've got a leak into the oil. Therefore the oil level's getting way too high, filling this up, going back through this, this breather pipe and into the, uh, into the fuel system. That's why I've got that's why I've got uh, oil all throughout the fuel system, not just the oil system. That explains that. Now what I've got to do is work out how and why I've got uh, water in the oil. When you pull the pull start, I actually get oil belching out of there. Let me show you. That tells us the cylinder is just full of oil there. Right, let's uh, let's get this oil sump drained, and then uh, I think we'll have to take this apart quite a bit more and try and find out where the leak is. So 
and this is the drain pot a bit of fuel came out then holy well, cow this is really filled up as you can see in the pan there there's not a lot of unmixed oil it is being well and truly mixed with any and all this and if you have the engine running for a period of time that oil gets very very well mixed with water, petrol, whatever gets in there. It's been draining for quite a while now, you see it's still dripping out. If you have a look at how much oil's in there, oily water, my goodness me that was absolutely full up. I wonder everything was starting to flood. There should be oil up to that sort of level. I would say that oil was, was filled all the way up here because of all the water that was getting forced in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put those plugs back in to stop it draining and making a mess. I'm going to undo all of these bolts around here as I've started on the other side and we'll try and separate the pump from the motor and see if we've got a, an easy way of fixing that seal. Okay, now all those bolts are out, just transfer this onto, uh, onto a towel just so that um, as I actually start to split this apart I'm sure there'll be a lot of oil that comes out. So let's see if I can split these two. First bit of pressure got it going. Well, there's a stud there you see, so this thing sits and locates, the two parts locate on studs. So that's worth knowing. Here to be getting any further apart well let's just keep wiggling it obviously there's a shaft through the middle here now I don't know how those two are connected so I'm hoping there's nothing on the shaft that's actually holding this together I'm sure I will find out very soon I'll just use a pry bar and just very gently try and split the two apart it's very solid at the top It will not, will not separate totally. I don't know what it is that's holding it in place now. I'm assuming, or I'm hoping it's not, but it might be something on the shaft. Some sort of keyway on the shaft or something, but I would not have thought so. thought that you would buy all of that as a complete unit which was just bought onto the motor housing and therefore you wouldn't need to reverse assemble it you'd literally just put these two parts together and make sure they were sealed right I'll bring you back in a minute so I did a little bit of research, I actually went back through my old, my own old video of how to take the, uh, the pump housing apart and realised yeah there's a woodruff key in there which actually holds on some of the impellers so I think that's what's stopping it. So I'm going to very quickly now take this off and all of the impellers inside and then hopefully we'll, um, we'll be able to then slide this back plate and this plate off. I'll, I'll bring you back in a minute once I've got all of this housing off. So I've got the pump housing out in a couple of pieces. So we're left with this. Now, still could not get this undone. So what I thought was maybe that the shaft could be fed in from that way. So I undid the nut here, tapped on the end to see if I could actually push the shaft through. So that's a bust, that's not a way of doing it. So 
I'll put this back together now so I'm going to keep having a, having a play with it on this side and see if there's some other way that I can get this to free up looks to me like it's just a bit of a press fit so I might have to put like a, a flywheel puller on there and just pull it off but uh, I'll bring you back in a second okay we've got a flywheel puller on here now so let's give this a little crank and see what we get see what action hopefully this just pulls off if not I fear I'm gonna smash something but let's uh, let's give it a try There we go. So what was important there is obviously that bearing is a is a press fit in, in there which I will have to fix up next time. Put this back together again, make sure I can centre that really well. Right, let's uh, let's do a quick tidy up here and then we'll see what uh, see what we've got happening. Okay, so I'll just messing and touching and this came out. Now this has a timing mark on it. I've pulled the crank handle. So I would imagine everything now is totally out of whack. So from a timing point of view, um, it, the camshaft needs to be moving those, moving those valves, these valves up and down in the correct, in the correct sequence at the correct time. I'm pretty sure with me pulling this out now, I'm going to need to, I think I'm pretty certain this needs to go back in as a timed correctly, otherwise we're going to have, um, yeah, when we're supposed to have exhaust, we'll be having gases going in into the uh, into the cylinder and getting ignited, so i got to look into this now and work out exactly how we put all this back together, what the timing is on this, plus I need to get myself to shop, get some degrees and get all the inside of this cleaned out. And then we'll also have a look at the pump housing and work out exactly what's happened there and got water getting through here. Right, I'll bring you back another day. <laughs> 